we have hey. Beth. Oh, there she is. All right. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Great. Oh, we're so excited to have you back, as always. A regular on London Calling now. This is getting to be fun. <laughs> yes, it is. I enjoy it. Well, that's great to hear. Well, glad it's not a burden. No, not at all. Not at all. I, uh, I really do enjoy coming on the show. So, anytime. Great. So, what's going on with um, what you and uh, Michael were going over? I'm really curious. You got me all curious. <laughs> well, um, by the way, Ziggy is recording. So, for all y'all that were asking, he's got nice. it covered. Um, of course. Basically, what I did was I took Michael and showed him my screen yesterday afternoon. It had slowed down a little bit. Euro had dropped from 1440 down to 1350s. I actually got long in that area, and it was around 13. Right here, where I, my, where I have the cursor now, is this the candle, the 30 minute candle? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm That is it. And I went long somewhere around 1346, right in the middle of those candles. Let's see if I can get a 15 minute to come up. It's moving so slow. All right, here we go. Yes, right around where that doji is on the 15. Nice. Nice support in there. Mm -hmm. good, val good value zone. And the way that I did that and the way that I've been doing some of these trades that uh, a lot of people are saying you're bottom ticking, you're top ticking, you're, you're getting these great entries. That's because I go down to the one minute. And in the very first interview that we did, that was one of the things that I told everyone was I get very precise with my entries. So wow, during, one minute. Yeah. I can – I was actually walking Michael through the chart yesterday, and for about 40 minutes, I was telling him what each candle was likely going to do on the one-minute chart. And just using uh, Japanese candles. Mm hmm But nice. it's more than just the candlestick itself. It's more of a where the closed position is, and where it is in comparison to the previous candles. And when you're looking at the one-minute chart, you have to remember that your levels that most people look at are anywhere between 20 to 50 pips apart. When you go down to the one-minute, your levels can be five pips apart. Sure. A lot, of, yeah, a lot of back and forth we see here. So when you're looking at them, if you look at those different levels, you can look at one candle, see where it's going to close. It'll come down, touch the body of the previous candle. It might have just been one or two pips. But you can really get a feel for who is in control of the market. So during that big drop, everyone, when it gets down to those significant support resistance levels, you, you start questioning, will it hold? Will the support hold or will it break? On a 15-minute chart, it's hard to tell because you're waiting for 15 minutes to go by to see who's really in charge. If you go down to a one-minute, you can really start seeing where the pushing and pulling is coming in. You and know what? I that's, mean, that, that's, that's, that's exactly how my mentor used to attack the open. Instead of waiting for the five-minute candle to print, he would make his decision after the, after the two-minute. He'd use two-minute candles. Right. And depending on uh, how he felt after that two minute, first two-minute candle, uh, you know, depending on the positioning, you know, in the bigger time frame, then he would attack. And if he got if he got taken out from that level, then he would either re reassess and try to re-enter somewhere else, or maybe even flip it and go the other way. Um, right. I, yeah, that's interesting. I'm a very big student of price action. You and <laughs> if you ask me what my bias is, and I've joked with a couple other traders about this. My bias is one minute long. I have no bias. It changes with the price action and what, what it's Blake actually doing. This? I'd love to hear what Blake says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He must give you a hard time. Uh, yeah, me and Blake are often on opposite sides of the trade. <laughs> but his is more long-term, where mine right. is more immediate gratification. 
<laughs> you know, that's the American way, right? <laughs> so, so what is the what do you what do you what, what do you risk um, to um, what's your risk to reward then on a, in a one minute? On um, one minute, like whether, say like whether euro. If you're trading the euro two after one. two after. to one, if I catch a runner, it goes to you know five, six, seven to one. So. Uh, typically, if I go in on a one minute. So I guess I should say, what's the smallest um, um, then risk to reward as far as pip wise? Um, you, you'll be willing to if, go after. If I can't get ten pips for a five pip stop, I don't take it. Right, right, okay. My, so my scalping, I don't scalp for mini pips like small stuff. My my scalping method turns into a short term swing kind of trade because I'm not going to sit there and work myself to death trying to make 10, like five, seven pips, five, seven pips. I look for, I still use those significant levels that everyone else uses, but I also see the patterns in between those. And like on the one minute, you can see where it would come in and have say a triangle, for instance, you get a triangle on the one minute. The way that it plays out is the same as if it was on a daily or a four hour. Sure. Triangles are triangles. Right. The only thing is, is on a one minute, those patterns te tend to change faster. So you Do just you just adjust them to where the price action is going, and you can continue to see. Like a prime example is yesterday when I got in on Euro. I got in at thirteen forty six. If you were looking at a fifteen minute chart, you probably thought, well. It might pull back to 1370, 1380. If you were looking at a one minute chart, you would have been able to clearly see the candles were continu continuously putting in a bull uptrend. So you, if you just stayed with it and stayed with that formation, it's very, you, you could have rode it all the way back up to 1410. And once it got it past that initial pullback, I automatically began thinking, well, this is going to do a pennant just like previous price action from the other day where we were at um, 1380 and it formed a pennant back down into the 1310s or something, and then it pushed back up. So my expectation with what Euro is doing now is it fell from 1440, came down to support, it formed a bottom. It went back up into the 1410s. I told everyone in the chat room yesterday afternoon around 4.30-ish, maybe, maybe a little bit before that, that this would be a good sell zone into Asia. Asia normally doesn't like the euro very much. It normally goes down. I felt like that would be the second point in where the pennant formation would come in. So I said sell at the 1410. It should come down somewhere into the 1360s to form the next bottom for the bottom of the pennant. And it luckily played out the way I had anticipated. So nice. That's I'm awesome. Just very good at seeing the patterns. So now, um, do you use any moving averages, or Rick wants to know about a MACD? Do I do not use MACD. Or? I don't like it. To me, it's too slow. Right. I have no patience for MACD. <laughs> so what do you use then? Um, I have a 9 and a 27 EMA. That's right. I remember you telling us that. Yep. And okay. a good rule of thumb is, and I mean it's pretty much a common thing. If price is above your EMA, you wait for a close in between the EMAs to start becoming neutral in your bias. If you get a close below the EMAs, you're looking for, well, is the trend changing? Is it going to form a pattern? So you have to be able to take all those aspects into mind whenever you're actually trading on a one-minute time frame. So, so you, you, you use the one minute to pretty much execute, and then you use bigger time to kind of um, get a bias? Or... Sort of, yeah. I use the one minute to execute. Um, Typically, intraday, the one minute, five minute, 15 minute will guide me in right. where I think it's going to go. And I'm following the flows of the price. 
Right. I mean, you'll see on Twitter, and and sometimes I'll even say like um, the day before yesterday, Wednesday, I told everyone on Twitter if Aussie got the eighty-one forty-eight, I was going to short. That's where the one twenty-seven came in. I said in order to trigger, and the reason I did the eighty-one forty-eight was because I Aussie was getting slow getting to the eighty getting past the 8114 mark and it was around 8114 when I posted it on Twitter and I said you know I don't really think it's going to get to the 50 handle so that's why most of my entries if if you actually look at where my entry point exit points are uh, and I think I said this in my first interview I use 2468 I don't use the 05 10 15 20 so I entered at 8148 just in case it didn't hit the 50 handle. Nice. I got, yeah, I, got, I, I got triggered almost at a top tick, and I'm still in that trade right now riding Aussie down. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I, my number is 40 now. Instead, I used to, you know, I used to think, you know, I want to see it test higher, but I like to use 40 um, as, uh, I don't know, if I'm looking to short to get back down to the whole number. You know, a lot of times if it's really solid resistance in that area, it won't even touch, you know, it won't even barely even get in the in that yeah. zone at all. Uh, awesome stuff though, I'll tell you, um, really, um, really good stuff. Um, so when you're down to a one minute, you, are you are you making the charts really um, like the way I have it now or do you really go where you can see the candles clearly like this? Um, I tend to zoom in and out. So you go so both that, ways. Yeah, I, I like to be able to see the overall picture for my patterns, but at the same time, whenever I'm actually getting really focused on what the next candle could possibly be, then I do zoom it in a little bit more on whatever the current trend is. Right. Yeah, that's what it's all about, you know, riding the trend and, and figuring out a way to, to stay with it as, as um, quickly or get it, get it going as quickly as possible. Pedro says, uh, ask her what she thinks for the euro for later in the day. All this chart stuff is impossible to decipher. I think one thing about the charting, uh, Pedro, is it's it's actually really simple. You know, it's it's about keeping it simple. And if, if you're using a lot of things that's making it confusing and, and stymieing your trading, then you know, obviously that's not what it's about. You know, it's it's simplicity for me. You know, that's what I like about charting. I would say my overall gut. I kind of think the flows are going to head higher. I don't. I think there could be some push with it being a Friday, and then it come back down a little bit. But like I said, my bias is very short term. Right. I do. I do what the charts tell me to do. I'm not a predictor. I'm a reactor. So. What are you, what are you doing with the euro right now? Mark wants to know. <laughs> I actually just got um, long again off support. There you go. On that right pennant. Nice, right there, same spot. She just keeps whacking away at it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm up about 12 pips on that one. And Catherine says, "Can you ask Beth how close she keeps her stops? For example, uh, now on her Aussie short, as we mentioned earlier, you like to trail, so uh, that's a good question, Catherine. What, what do you, how you, how are you managing this? Well, for Aussie, I'm looking at it a little bit more long term because it, I'm not scalping it. I'm not sitting in it just trying to, you know, make ten pips, twenty pips, or whatever, like I do on Euro. Um, let's see. I have a trend line coming in. I'm looking for somewhere around maybe 79.70, maybe. The 80 handle, I want to see what we do around the 80 handle, what's going to happen there. But um, right yeah, a lot now. Of support there, a lot of support in that 80 level for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right now, once we got down to 80, the 80, 70s, where we broke through yesterday, I moved my stop from 81.48 where it was at break even down to that 80.75 area. Nice. Yeah. Makes sense. Giving it a little bit of room. I moved it yesterday 
about 5.30-ish after it broke through. So would you consider like yourself a, a hybrid trader then? You like to try to um... – Yes. I don't, I don't believe in labels. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I, I mean I, I'm a hybrid trader all the way. I, I, I am working on my long-term trading. I'm not a very good long-term trader, and I've mentioned this before. The longest-term trade I ever had was the pound Aussie earlier this year. And I think I made about 1,600 pips off that move. Sweet. Um, I, like, I held it for almost two months. Was not a fan. It's not my thing. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. Well, you keep trailing like you do in – like if you, you, know, you manage the way you manage in small time, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and but uh, see, I have a lot of screen time. Having been sick, I'm able to stare at the charts all the time because my activities are limited. Right. If and I actually warned some of the traders in chat, you know, I'm free to start doing what I want to in July, so don't expect previous results to resume <laughs> because <laughs> I might be doing more things. But that's great. I, I um, I do. I put a lot of chart time in. I stare at them all day long, and sure. and and that's how I've progressed as a trader. Just having that screen time, the experience. I mean, you, yeah, it becomes friendly, right? I mean, it becomes something that you, you know, everything starts starts popping out at you. Oh, Whereas yeah. before, you know, it's just like driving a race car. That's the way I just describe trading to people. Is you know, when you first you get behind the wheel, it's not going to be comfortable, but after a while, you know, you you, you get that feel. Uh, and I, you know, and and like Beth, she doesn't take losses, you know, and that can keep her aggressive because she doesn't feel the pain. Of entering trades, you know, because when you're taking losses, you know, entering trades can be painful um, because you're worried about that next loss, that next big loss. Don't do that, right, Beth? Yeah, I mean, see, this is where if if you keep your stops close and you're able to follow closely, that's one thing. If you're not able to stare at the charts, then it's understandable having the bigger, you know. Uh, the, the bigger stops because right. you can't sit there and stare at the charts. So the way that I trade isn't made for everybody. If you're going to be one of these traders that sits in front of a screen, it would be useful to know how to interpret candle comparisons and things like that so that you can get the better entries and the better exits. If right. you need to be a swing trader because you can't do the screen time, then of course you're going to need a bigger stop. Right. I mean, that's just – it's a given. It depends on what kind of trader you are and your actual psychology as a trader as to what you can handle and what's best for you. So, you know, my style isn't for everybody. Yeah, and I mean – You have to adapt, like, bits and pieces from everyone to make your own individual style. See, I use stuff from Blake. I use stuff from Michael H. I use stuff from Maria. I use stuff from Jared. I, I mean, and Raphael off of Remix Trades on uh, Twitter. I mean, I get information from all these sources, and I combine them into forming some of my bias, what I think is going to happen. I use the information, and I make the best decision I can based on that and what I'm seeing on the charts. Right. That, I that's think, why I, think I am important. a definite hybrid trader. I think it's what's the most important thing is whatever time frame you're living in that you stay true to that time frame, you know, and and, yes. and not try to cheat it. And I think that's where most people make their mistakes is they try they cheat the time frame they're in, and they don't, um, you know, they don't move their stops correctly for that time frame, and then that's when they either leave a ton on the table, or uh, you know they get faked out or whatever. And Nick says. Um, what entry did Beth get on the current uh, dollar uh, euro long? I think she said already. And, uh, can she? Uh, yeah, thirteen eighty. Can she uh, take us through her um, uh, lead up to the entry, please? And she was just talking about that um, the wedge, right? If I gave you all my secrets, I'd have to charge y'all. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, let's see. The best way I can describe it is on the one minute. When I look at a one minute a one minute candle chart, don't ask me how. I don't really know how I do this. 
I can sit there and watch what's happening. I'm looking at the candles. And I can kind of determine where the candle is going to stay in, like what area. Looking at your chart, you can see um, where the price had dropped from 1410. I mean, uh, yeah, the 1410 area it just came down from. You see how it's getting close to the support level that previously came in. All right, that first set of wicks that you see, I did not get in on those. I was not convinced. The price moved back up. You can see where the, pre the little bit of resistance comes in. I wanted to see if we got past that. So when we went back down, we formed another wick there. It was not as low as the previous wicks, which means we tested, could not get low enough. The next candle was an inside candle. The moment the very next bar broke above, I got in. See, that's really important, folks. See how she's using, instead of waiting for five minute, which would have put her way up in here, she's using these smaller candles um, uh, to to use as a as a, as the as the bull bear line, as a tug of war, if you will, to see how she wanted to see how that harami was handled. And it was very bullish because, you know, usually low-end Haramis will complete for lower, but since it broke above the midpoint of that candle. Uh, See, yeah, my anticipation for that, the, the large bull candle, the, the large green candle, when the Harami hit and the next bar started, the next bar didn't come back into the previous candle. Not really. Not at all. It, it opened up and it kept shooting higher. My anticipation was that that bar would shoot up to where the previous wicks were, into that resistance. The next bar, you see it get it went up, it got rejected a little bit. To me, that's where people are trying to trick you into thinking it's going to go back down. But yet it could not close back below where that bull bar was. So nice. my yeah, anticipation... Details. For, yeah. <laughs> So my next, the anticipation for the next bar was that it would be green and that it would go higher. Nice. And I did just close that last one at 90. I mean, so. if you're going to scalp the way Beth likes to scalp, you have to be living in these, in at least a two minute at the minimal. I, I, mean, I can, I can see why you're in a one minute if, if this is what you're going to do, because then you see opportunity, you know, whereas a five minute, you know, you don't see opportunity. You're late. You're constantly chasing and, and um, and whatnot. This is I tricky think, right now because we're going into 4 a.m. and we're just back and forth here. What do you think next? 4 a.m. is coming up. How, how do you feel about 4 a.m., by the way? Does that mean anything to you? Well, I will say 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. I absolutely despise. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> That's funny because Chris Bayer, he seems to love it. He was, so he was always preaching about that time. Frame. Well, recently, I mean, I used to be able to be able to ride trends through that that time frame but it's like everybody in London goes and gets coffee now, or tea now sorry guys if you're in London I have no idea what you're doing but <laughs> to me during that time frame it's like every there's like some people that go on break and it gets pushed in one direction they come back from break and it gets pushed in the opposite direction it gets kind of choppy hmm. so and what I think is happening now with the euro is it's gonna get choppy possibly from here on into New York close within this pennant you know, that kind of makes sense, though, because if you think about it, is the 4 a.m. traders or the traders that are just waking up that maybe are a little bit late compared to traders like yourself, and they're trying to get something going. Uh, so in that time frame, they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna try to trap them and try to confuse them as opposed to um, just letting the move follow through from Europe into the open of um, U.S. So, well, I yeah. got a couple questions here. Let's see. Um, uh, uh, Nick G, I don't know if we covered this or not already, saying, is Beth about to cover Aussie dollar on approaching support? Um, let me flip over to that real quick. Maria saying, yay, she uses stuff for me. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> you notice she didn't mention me at all. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Nick G saying... Um, I'm sorry, Chris. Of course I follow you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not awake when you're trading. I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm not, that I'm that so might be the problem. That's what yeah. it is. I'm actually, I, I would. I remember waking up at um, 
6 a.m., which would be noon time, just in time for the close of Europe. And I would get to hear all the good jokes and all the good, uh, you know, all the everybody patting each other on the back, all the pips they made from from the open and whatnot. So you know, <laughs> that's good to hear you're you're showing them uh, what to do with that time frame. Though that's great. And Nick also saying, um, what um, what was the two four six eight part of the entry? Is it a type oh. of ten theory? Yes, she, she uses that as a ten theory as a as opposed to um, the whole number and the half where it can be a little more choppy, right? Well, and it's not like if you're looking at big time frames, you know, like some with the Aussie right now. I, I don't want you to think I'm using like eighty one twenty or eighty one forty or eighty one sixty. I'm using eighty one twenty two. 8124 80, you know it's that last pip it's, it's that last number um, as far as where I'm entering and then sometimes whenever I'm exiting exits are a little less pretty <laughs> whenever I see it happening I just kind of get out but sure, um, that makes sense though you know you don't, you don't have time you, you just yeah. gotta do it yeah. I mean, because one minute things are flipping around like crazy. I can, uh, and that, that gets to a really good question from Ian. Uh, Ian saying, does the speed that the tape moves factor into whether you think uh, there will be a reversal or continuation? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, speed and aggression to. has everything to do with um, the power of the move uh, and who's in charge and how hard they're pushing. I mean, you can – I mean, when you see these big, long candles – and it's getting pushed really, really hard in one direction. It's just like during news. That speed is intense. It drops or it spikes instantly. So the speed does matter. And when the speed halts abruptly, then there's a reason for it. So when you see those really big candles and they just automatically stop and they don't have much of a wick or – and they stop like – if if you look where that – where you are right now, Chris, you can see that that big red candle right in the middle, it stopped dead in its tracks at support. So, I mean, it's – you can see that the next bar, if it starts green, I'm in. The risk is nothing, really. You just put it right under that previous wick. And one thing is interesting, too, is especially with this futures here, is you can see where the volume comes in. And these are these are the these are the times, of course, when traders are very active. You can see how um, you know after that big volume comes in. If it continues, then you um, and the volume just kind of bumps along, kind of evenly. Then you know then the price will continue along that action pretty good until either a you get an exhaustion candle or it seems that they just lose interest um, after that time. Uh, you know when the, either the close of Europe or uh, or whatever. I, I tell you, it's so important, folks, to really use the volume. Do you have, what do you think about volume to price action? That's for me. That's what saved me in trading. Volume to price action. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, you, we can't see it so much with forex, but do you use um, do you use these futures where you can actually see volume and see? If when, I'm completely honest, I very rarely use futures. I don't trade them. I don't, I don't really look at them. Um, I mean, I, I, I skim them from time to time, especially when you guys are talking about them, if I see something interesting. But it doesn't, it doesn't affect how I trade daily. Interesting. Um, for me, you know, I mean, because um, for forex, um, I try to use high event days as as implied, um, you know. Um, with the as implied um, volume, and or um, the, uh, and a lot of times those can be inflection points, you know. Right. I know for for like when um you know I used to trade ESs, for me, um, you know, say we go down to fifteen minute or whatever, or even you have a five to include everything in your analysis. So I may skim them, but I don't study them. I mean, not so much as like. Um, you know, like when you're trading the euro and you're looking at buns or you're looking at Dixie or, you know, um, euro crosses. I mean, you look at all those factors and you take everything in whenever you're trying to understand the flow. Right. So, but 
as far as like really charting the futures, I don't. Well, that's the one thing I really miss about Forex really is, is the volume because, I mean, you know, we used to just watch tape uh, when we were trading stocks. That's all we do is watch tape and big volume came in and then we'd watch price and either price went one way or the other, you know, when those big, um, big uh, blocks came through and, uh, and then, you know, you'd get follow through. Um, and that's, I really miss that a lot. Really easy to see the big money moving. With Forex, I think it's much trickier. Uh, and but what you do is really impressive. How you just use pure price action. I've 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 always admired people that can do that. Um, Chris Bayer is really good at it. Um, a few others are really, really, especially in small time and super small time. Good I stuff. Think you really have to have a a mentality for it. Oh, and and a real passion for it. I mean, yes, it, yes. if you don't absolutely love it. <laughs> It'll put you to sleep, you, and there's there's afternoons like um, I actually admitted in the chat room yesterday. I fell asleep at my desk. I was tired, <laughs> so I, t I took a little one hour nap just sitting here at my desk because the price action was lulling me to sleep. Well, look, I mean, look at this. You get, if, I mean, if you're going to be trading 12 hours, you're going to have ports of the day. They're going to just do like we're seeing right now on this ESs where there's just nothing, you know, for uh, you know hours on end. It's yes. just the way it is, you know. It's just the way mm -hmm. trading can be. Um, I'll tell you, this is really great stuff. I really enjoy getting you mic'd up, Beth. You really are special. We're really fortunate, and this is what I tell traders all the time. Uh, you know, if you um, encounter somebody who really has a style that works, I don't say so much. You know, you need to adapt to what they're doing or um, follow what they're doing or whatever. But if you don't, if if it's if you're not profitable and you're not sure, um, you know, it's it's important to at least um, pick their brain a little bit and try to get the feel of what a winner um, is thinking and what they're doing because it's it's all about your mindset, you know, it, it really is. Yeah, um, I think the biggest point for me and what I would advise other traders to do is when you're looking at your charts and you're trying to figure out what's going on and it seems like it's just absolutely crazy and nothing is making sense. Break it down, make it small, and just follow. I know it's hard sometimes to see what it's telling you, but when I'm reading the candles, I'm reading the story. And basically, the story is unfolding. It's like every candle is a new page. And as you're reading it, you start to see the things that are happening. And when price gets into these little boxes, um, they're like rectangles. And for most, I mean, when you look at a rectangle, you know it's a continuation pattern. But when it gets in those rectangles and you're not sure what's happening because it's kind of choppy or whatever like that, just take the, take the time and be patient to realize you're in a very small range. Don't try to jump in in those areas. Wait for it to break out of those boxes. Wait for it to move and tell you what's happening in the story. I mean, you get the big run ups, you know, those are the best plots in the world for a story. You know, you just have to, you're any good TV show, you're waiting for the big moment. So you have to be patient and, and wait for it to work up to that and just read and follow what's going on instead of saying, Oh, this looks good, and just jumping in. You you want to be able to, and sometimes confirmation signals take too long. So if you if if you can really learn what it's telling you, then you can make very good, informed, premeditated action, not impulsive reaction decisions. Yeah, that's that's so critical there. And you know, folks, if you want to have that mentality, you just got to do a ton of back testing. And looking at charts, like Beth says, where it just it just comes out and bites you. You know, she, her, her plays are just biting her like crazy. And you know, as a, as a professional trader, you know, when they bite you, you 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 move. You don't wait. I like it. It's it's very easy to do to get into that mindset. Um, whenever I was first starting, I would take uh, like four or five pairs, and instead of actually back testing and scrolling the chart on the computer, I would take a, you know, a certain amount of time where you had decent price action. 
I would pull it up on the chart, you know, I would print it off. And instead of writing on the chart itself, get you a piece of notebook paper. And when you're looking at the chart, write on the notebook paper what you're seeing. And this is like doing your homework. You can't come out of the, you know, you can't come out swinging and hitting home runs every time. This is your, this is your practice after school, so to speak. You go, you, you, you write on a piece of paper what you're seeing on the chart, and you can do this four or five times on the same chart, and you'll start seeing new and different things. So you print the chart off, and you can look at it and just write it on a piece of paper. It makes it so simple. You'll start picking up more and more things as you do that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's well said. Uh, I know my mentor, too, used to take pictures of ideas when he when they when the plan went to how it was and so he could always have a file of good trades and bad trades um, always constantly yeah. printing up um, and having that. that on file and a couple of questions from Nick sorry Nick if uh, I wasn't avoiding you, you had a lot of questions and maybe some of them I can answer uh, already um, I think she might have mentioned you said on average what risk is Beth taking on each scalp and I think she said two to one right he wants to know is it based on percentage of capital um, well, basically, like whenever I'm looking at a trade, it's I, I'm not going to lose more than five or ten pips. So it's whatever is suitable for your risk tolerance. I might go in full scale. So it just depends on what I see, how convinced I am, the probability of it working out, the level, how it's reacted to the level prior. It's not a simple yes or no, this is what I do answer. Um, it's very dependent on what's happening. Um, but typically, yeah, with five, ten pips, I'm not losing more than that. So uh, as far as my risk, money-wise and capital, uh, it depends on the trade and where it's at. And the volatility of the day, what day of the week it is, what the hour is, is it London close, is it expiry yeah. time, you know, you have to take all those factors into consideration. Yeah, no, I mean, it's that's there's it's not every trade is on its own merits and on its own setup, its own situation. And I like the way you said, you know, how you want to make sure that, you know, you can get to a target. Um, and not so many that, that many words, but that's pretty much what I gathered. Uh, you know, that's when you when you analyze the trade is you know you got to make sure that it's going to give you what you're looking for. Otherwise, you know you're just going to get stopped out. You know if you're if it's bumping up against resistance, and you're looking to uh, go long, uh, you know like Beth said, wait for that break or wait for something to happen to put pressure on the other side. You know because it is it's just a sumo um, you know wrestling or tug of war or whatever uh, in whatever time frame you're living in. Yeah, yeah I really think it's awesome really stuff. I think it's really hard for some traders when you ask a question like that and, I mean, not picking on Nick, just saying it, when you're looking for those specific answers to those kind of questions, it's hard to give those. And when you're looking for those, it's, it's, it's difficult because in my plan, and, you know, I'm big on plans. I mentioned that the first time we talked. I, um, I have rules. I have situational rules when certain things are happening this is how much I'm allowed to risk yeah, and you have important. to do that for yourself based on your risk tolerance and your experience yeah. level that's, so, that's, that's so the best that's thing so I could say is how do you feel about it where do your rules fit in and set yourself to those rules yeah, that's well said. Trading's got to be comfortable, and, and, and that, that means comfortable with, 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 with losses and everything, comfortable with uh, taking trades. And I think the bottom line is, is, is if it's not comfortable because uh, you're not either profitable or you're just break even, then maybe go into um, simulation mode and just get more comfortable with the simulator, and then that, that, that's an easy transition um, to, um, you know, just to, and then you can trade in Forex is great because they give you the ability to trade micro lots, which actually, you know, you, is like live bullets, but it can't hurt you like rubber bullets, I call it. Mm -hmm. And let's see what else I have for questions here. We've been talking for a while here. Um, I'm not missing anything. I don't know if anybody let's else see is. here. 
Um, how many um, pairs is Beth eyeing at any one time? That's from Nick as well. And also Nick says, um, was the inside bar critical on the um, euro dollar entry without um, which she wouldn't have entered? And if so, why? Back to that um, tr um, yeah. idea before. Which, it was ages ago. Which is that more? <laughs> that, um, um, on the one minute, I guess it was. Let me see if I can find it again. That, that play we talked about um, where you got long, I guess. Uh, back down at like 1346, yes. The inside bar was very instrumental to that. If, it was, if you're talking about my previous trade from yesterday yeah, where I got right in. Here. I think he was just talking about recently this one here. <clears throat> Yeah, the, okay. I see where he's talking about. Right over here. You got your cursor right. Yeah, that's it. Inside bar was pivotal to me entering at that point. The reason it was pivotal is because the bear bar, the pin bar, it came back up, and you can see how the wick did not come down to retest the previous low. I mean, it tried, couldn't get there, which to me says buyers are coming in. Well, you see right. the inside bar has no wick on the bottom. It never got below where the previous red candle was. It got pushed down, but it couldn't get pushed below. So that tells me the buyers are definitely, they're pushing back. They're wanting to go higher. So whenever I got in on the very next candle right above that inside bar, I felt confident and also, when you're trading inside bars, the risk to reward on those are quite well. I mean, that's two or three pips. So right your there. stop would have been right below this, uh, the bottom of that uh, harami, right? Yeah. That inside candle. Yeah. See, the risk to reward there is really um, is great, uh, and, and, um, you and do the have positioning to allow for too. The see how she had the positioning as well into the support. There was a lot going on there, not just the candle, right? Right, right. I mean, you, it's it's the whole picture. You, yeah. you, you can't just – and I think that's where a lot of candlestick traders may go wrong. You, you can't just trade a candlestick, and that's why when they get down on the one minute, they say it's all noise. Well, it is all noise if you're just taking each candle into consideration by itself. Right. You that's have why to you use, like to get out to the bigger time – I mean the bigger picture as well. You have to use well the, the, the real picture, and you can see how – Price is reacting at certain points. You can see those smaller support resistance levels, and all so of that just, is all of it matters. So you just zoom in and out. Then is all you got to do in that situation, just like I just yep. did. And then it looks like bigger time, which it is, of course. Okay, let's see a couple more questions, I guess, and then we'll let um, we'll let Beth um, do her thing, and then I'm going to probably flake out as well. It's Friday, everybody. It's great to see everybody. It's so interested though. Um, let's see what else. Um, and Sherry says, what time uh, frame chart is that? It's a one minute, of course, that she's living in um, for her entries and exits and whatnot. Uh, just because she wants more details is why she's down to the one minute, Sherry, not because it's just, you know, um, you know, what she trades. She wants to see those five minute candles and more. Um, broken down more, which really makes sense. Um, and Ian says, which time of day do you find your style of scalping works? And what times do you step away uh, from the computer? That's a great question. <laughs> it's a pretty simple one though, right? Uh, I mean, when, when yeah. the volume's in there, right? Um, I try my best. Talked, to have... we talked about though after 12, How I'm curious, how well do you do after 12 p.m. Um, uh, New York time? I mean, that's something. The the 12 to 5 p.m. range, um, I don't make a lot of money during that time. All right, that's I, good I don't to try. So much. <laughs> I, 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 literally, I don't try to make money during that time. Most of the time, if I haven't made my money by 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to make it. I mean, and, and a lot of times, I'll make all my money before New York even opens. Right. So um, it, it depends on the price action, how slow of a morning it is. But no, I try to be at my computer most day. I mean, I get up at 2, but I try to get to it as quick as possible because I like to see what's going to happen before London actually opens. Um, I've been getting up 
actually a little bit before two recently just because I wanted to see that two o'clock hour. Um, I've actually been picking off some pretty decent entries between two and three instead of waiting for London to open. Nice. And one of the big things I do want to point out, if you guys follow session opens and session closes, if you mark those on your charts, look for those, pay attention to those. We often go back and retest them at some point. Because sure. so the 1424 from New York Open yesterday was where I had initially planned the 1410 short. When we hit the resistance at 1410, though, and never made it to the 1424, that's why I was willing to go ahead and short at that point because I knew that the New York Open was just slightly above that. So it, you can pay attention to those opens as little mini levels, if you will. Um, but as far as my timing, I walk away from my computer every morning. You can ask the people in the chat room between 6 o'clock and 7. It's normally about 6.15 to 6.45. I unfortunately miss some of Polly. I'm sorry, Polly. You're awesome. <laughs> but not, my dog has to get like, walked, and unfortunately like, it's during that time. Um, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, my, my little dog starts saying, it's time, Mommy, so I have to take him. You, know, you got to get out and get, get out of your seat, too, every now and then. It's important. Well, I have get to get out. coffee, of course. Well, one thing so. she was saying, though, folks, that's really important is is that um, when that volume comes in, the, either the Open of Europe or the Open of North America or whatever, that's real support, real resistance, and that's something that you really have to pay attention to because, you know, there's, there's real money – uh, you know, large um, players coming in, and that's where they're going to defend those levels. You know, at those, at those where they where they have a lot of in, at stake. Yeah, that London point when it opens and closes. I mean, like opening, um, I can easily go back and see where the Tokyo one was, and it, it's been uncanny recently how often the Tokyo open gets tested by the London one, especially if we're going down, if it comes back up, and things like that. It's it's very it's very significant those those opening levels. So you know when when you look at like an hourly and you see the big clumps of the volumes, you can see where the open is. You can see where the open is, the open. And it's interesting how, you know, that volume comes in and it holds support, price moves higher. Uh, you know, volume comes in, we roll through um, moving averages and we move lower. And then, of course, where the volume's slow, you have not nearly the action, right? You have a lot of the consolidation happens when, uh, you know, markets are sleeping, resting. Yeah. So I, I'm really all about volume for me. I mean, I did six-hour um, – my only pay webinar I did with with, um, with MB was the volume. Uh, but you, you see it, though, in a manner, though, um, through price, which is, it takes a lot, folks, a lot of just – um, back testing and 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 um, an understanding, you know, um, where lines in the sand are and how they're handled, uh, to to really be able to not be chopped around and 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 constantly be profitable like Beth is. I mean, she's it's been a long road for you, right? I mean, you she went to college uh, studying this, and she was fortunate enough not just to have finance professors, but actually have traders who were professors to be able to give you both, um, you know, of, of the, um, of the sides of the reality and the book side, which is, is, is you know, really, um, valuable stuff. So hopefully you all will take the chance to either email Beth or, or, uh, talk to her on Twitter if you have any questions, because I mean, you know, you never know with someone like Beth, she could get picked up by a big firm, no, like my my mentor was. And, hey, you know, you don't ever say never. You know, she may <laughs> end up getting busy with private equity. Who knows? But you never know. I mean, she might get hit by a bus tomorrow, and you had a question for her. Thanks, God Chris. Forbid. <laughs> God forbid. No, I'm just saying though. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget when my mentor. Uh, he got in with private equity. Actually, he got in with a firm, and um, he actually uh, signed an agreement with them that he wouldn't um, go online and talk about what he was doing. And I'd lost the guy. I never, I never really saw him. And he actually tried to find me a few times, but we, I changed emails when I left Florida um, from my um, my local carrier, and I, I lost the guy. And 
We don't want to lose you, Beth. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> have some nice questions, you all, for her. And here's how you get a hold of her. Um, here's her email right here. Here's her uh, Twitter handle. And uh, yeah, trading isn't complicated. It's just a matter of being super organized and super disciplined and super dedicated. And that's the big threes that Beth is. And, uh, you know, you apply all that and you work all your edges um, in a similar manner. You know, you'll, you'll have good results in trading, I think. I want to give a shout out to all my wise trade buddies. Just, you guys are awesome. You make my day. Um, I'm, I'm sure you all know who you are. But if, and, and to everyone who is not in the wise trade chat room, it is amazing in there. The camaraderie, the people, the information, it's, I'm in there the whole time. Uh, I do kind of space out some after London close, so, but I'm still around. And the people that are in there are just amazing. The, the sense of community, it, it keeps trading from being so boring. Uh, we joke a lot. I'm sure if you've seen Blake's webinars where he puts us on Jumbotron, that's quite interesting. Um, but <laughs> and he always picks the most inopportune times, <laughs> so it's it's always fun. Yeah. This is it, guys. Look at here. I mean, Blake's in there like crazy. He's constantly. It's not like he's sort of in there. He's living in there when he's not on the air or doing something. And of course, everybody else who's in here. And we do have a really nice large group with us now. So I hope you enjoyed this, folks. You got an hour of. Um, a free time with Beth, um, and if you and, and they did lower the rates too. So if you want to get in with that chat, um, it was two hundred. I was paying two hundred and fifty for the. Uh, you get the Lightwave platform, which I have up here, which uh, stocks, um, forex, and futures, and easy access. Um, you get to go to the live market alerts that Blake puts out, and he's really timely, as well as Kip and um, and myself. I uh, put out a little something, and but his, a his stuff is. Yeah, seven, seven day free trial, and then you get to the chat from right here as well. And then there's tons of other videos and stuff. I mean, when this was first put together, um, Wise Trade actually had a NASCAR um, uh, sponsor where they had their their logo on the hood of a NASCAR. And when that's when Blake used to wear a tie, a suit and tie, when he did these things. I'm sorry, folks. I wouldn't be able to do this if I had to put a tie on. They'd have to pay me a lot. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm normally uh, in shorts and no shirt on. I'll be honest with you. I'm as about as comfortable as you can get. That's why I like to trade. I see these guys on Twitter with their um, their suspenders on and their and their. Um, I mean, if that's what it takes to get you to be professional, then hey, I, I you know, if you got to get up and shave and put on some fancy clothes, then more power to you. Whatever it takes. But uh, I think after a bit, though, just to be ex the excitement of just seeing the candles and the and the screens lit up is all I need, right, Beth? Yes, absolutely. It's I get really passionate about talking about this stuff. I love it. It's a huge part of my life and who I am. Um, it's not all of who I am. I do dedicate a lot of time to it, but um, but yeah, I really enjoy just the the constant action right yeah for me yeah. i mean i've admitted to you guys i play tetris <laughs> i <laughs> i like those mind stimulating kind of things so yeah this is this is perfect for me that's great yeah no i i, I tell you it's it is it, it's either you know what's the funny thing about trading is it is either something you um you either grasp it and you love it, but I think you have to give it time though. I mean, time to be able to understand what you're seeing. Um, and, and it's very important to, to in that time to, um, to, to simulate trade and not feel like you have to be profitable in that time because it, it is like going to college and, and you have to be able to have um, the ability to sit there and not make money, you know, for, it might take you six months, it might take you two months, it may take you um, a year, but I mean, the more you put into it, the more uh, mentoring and professional time you spend with people, uh, the easier it's going to be, and, and the more that you try to teach yourself um, and try to figure out a path on your own, um, the harder it's going to be, because you're going to, you know, you're going to have to um, 
go through which what works and what doesn't but but somebody I, I highly recommend this too I mean paying somebody to help you figure out what you're about um, you know your psychology what you what you want to do and that may change over time but initially though I think it's really important to have a positive experience with trading and not have it um, really I think most people they they get overwhelmed by it and then they just like oh that's that's just gambling that's not for me all right, everybody. We're so lucky to have Beth with us. We're going to let her go and take her dog out or rest or whatever time it is in North Carolina now. It's 4.30. All right. And now we're seeing the, um, the – look at this one-minute action on this euro right now. What do you think about this, Beth? Slipping through, which was support, um, that 13.80 that was um, working before. Would this be a spot where you would consider shorter or would you have already have gotten short up under uh, 1.14? Have you done anything since we've been talking? I am waiting to see what happens here. As of right now, it's still kind of just touched down on where my pennant level comes in. So I'm debating on whether to actually go long again. But it's getting closer to that time of day. I hate trading. So if you guys want to email me, this is the best time to catch me. I mean, it's just there's just a lot of people looking, and this is when a lot of people are looking and get choppy, you know. Um, yeah. They're, they're wanting to get in, they're wanting to see some action. And this is the point of time where a lot of traders get trapped. And you're like, well, I'll just wait and see what happens in the London. Uh, Blake went through it the other day, the seven, the seven stages of grief as a trader. Where you, <laughs> where you, you know, or how it works. You go from short term to long term to position to the religious praying trader and stuff like that. So <laughs> oh this, is, this is that time of day where those kind of things happen. So just be right. careful. <laughs> Right, because I mean, you know, it's, it's a lot. Of, we see the um, if we go back to the futures, we see some volumes come in, and, and the people, uh, traders, have placed some bets, and now it's a matter of just um, who's which side of the tug of war is going to take charge. All right, everybody. Um, any more questions or anything you have, um, send them to Beth or catch her in the chat. Um, so great to have you as always. And anytime anybody wants to be mic'd up, as long as um, you know you're Blake approved. Uh, I will gladly hand you the mic because I love to hear what you guys are about and what you're doing. And if you notice, every time we have Beth on, she doesn't really have any um, anything really um, upper sleeve or really crazy or different. You know, it's it's always the same thing. You know, she's working hard. At the, she's at the screens. She's studying um, price action um, really, really um, um, in low and small time. Um, and um, and big time as well, but um, um, and and, uh, and she's not taking losses. You know, she's playing. She's playing very very um, methodically um, in in her um, in her style, which changes depending on what's going on and how she feels about the setup. So it's 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 never exact. And I get the same thing from profitable traders. It's always the same. You know, uh, it's a lot how they feel. It's a lot about um, you know. Um, they, they can't even explain it, right? I mean, it's sometimes um, just the experience, um, you know, it says, okay, it's time to go, right? Yeah. Um, also, if you see a move happening, don't chase it. I mean, it, there's always going to be another move. Don't kick yourself if you miss one. I miss trades. Uh, you know, there's, there's times where you don't see every trade. Don't, don't beat yourself up over it. There's always going to be another one. Uh, the worst thing you can do is actually chase it and get stuck and lose money. Wait for the next setup. Wait to see what's happening. Follow the story and wait for a chance to get in. That's really well said. I, I remember that's one thing I always used to hear Blake saying is that he didn't care about missing a move. It's just he did not want to chase. He was never going to chase. Uh, and that's when you when you really um, um, discipline like that. You know, you you just you don't get whipsawed much. Mm -mm. Try not to. I got my, I got, I got in some trouble a week or so ago. Um, back when we were at the 1380 level, I mean, I was, I was not in a place where I was reading price very well. Some days you're so in sync and and you just can't miss a beat. Some days you couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. You know, you, you just there's no way the you can you just can't get a trade to work. And those are the days you just say, hmm. I'm going to go take a nap or something. You, you just go do something else, go for a walk, just 
step do away. Do you find a pattern with that though? This will be the last thing we'll talk about. I'll let you go. Do you find a pattern with that? Because I, I mean, because I mean that really makes sense though. Because either some days the algos are just trying to whip it around to make no sense at all to fake everybody out. I mean, they know in the end where they're going to take it, but the path they take can just be so weird and ridiculous. Whereas other times it's just like you know, I mean, like like you said, you know, I mean, every everything's hit perfectly and it, it all falls into place um you know it's when i lose patience that's that's my problem my patience muscle needs a workout <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't, <laughs> that it makes doesn't sense. work very well right um, so, you, so you're trying you're trying to do you're trying to force things a little bit maybe yeah, if i try to force something that's normally the days that i just i lose it and, and it doesn't work the um because it's normally during those grinding periods or some choppy and it's like staying within a pattern and then it looks like it's going to break the pattern and then it false breaks and then it false breaks again and they're just keeping it in this this area that you, you just cannot see what's going to happen and you have to be patient and wait you can't try to say oh well, well I think it's going to go this way well then you're predicting you're going to it, predicting gets you in trouble so um, I like to react to what's moving I like this and if I start predicting and I lose my patience that's when I lose money right right, right yeah so do you have like a daily target and this is the last one do you have a daily target and if you do have a daily target do you find yourself trying to force to try to get to it some days my daily target is like a hundred pips <laughs> which yeah, is a lot but it is um, a lot 50 is great if you can hit 50 every day folks you're 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 a winning trader yeah um there's i mean i've had good right. days this past week where i've hit two three four hundred pips <clears throat> and you don't get those all the time but uh yeah i i guess on a daily i try to get 100 um if i don't get there then there's always tomorrow right so you're not going to force your issue after 12 o'clock kind of uh, I try not to and see yeah. that's the thing I, it's also from 12 to 5 when it does get slow I'm, I'm kind of I watch the charts during that time but it's more or less just to see what's going to happen through Asia especially well, you know, for any of my longer term trades my mentor was so hardcore he would trade through after hours if he didn't get his target uh, his target was only one point on full size and uh, he would he would go through after hours. He was so hard record, <laughs> just so he could say he got that point. <laughs> oh well, they each their own. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's it's Friday and it's time to have it's springtime. Beth, thank you so much. Uh, so thanks great for to having me. On. It, it, you know, it is so wonderful to hear. Uh, you know, this is important too for traders that are just starting, or that are are profitable, or just really to, you know desperate to make things work you know you got to hear the voice of somebody who it's working for them and and there is a way to make it work um, and so you know I think the most important thing really though with trading is is, is if you're if you're new and you, and you have to be profitable right away chances are you're gonna fail I mean it can't be that way it's like going to college you know you got to learn to earn right and uh, without that um, you know, got a long way to go. All right, everybody. Beth, thanks again. I'm gonna I'm gonna finally go. And everybody, take care. Um, thanks. Happy Friday, guys. Have a good weekend. Yeah, isn't it great to hear her voice? <laughs> and 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 best of health to you as well. We're always thinking about you. Uh, thoughts and prayers with you always. I appreciate. All right, Han. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Take care. All right, everybody, that was Beth Howell. Holy cow, that was so awesome. So great to have her mic'd up. And, and if you just joined us and you're wondering how to find her, how to get to her, what do I do? I want more Beth. Follow her on Twitter, folks, R-E-H-G-A-L-F-X. Uh, I don't think you have to put all caps in um, to get to it. Uh, also, her email is at the same handle at E-X-E-C-S.com. Um, great. Great. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I'm going to go. Yeah, and, and Nick saying, fantastic to hear Beth talk about her strategy. Maybe you should send her an email. Nick had a ton of stuff he wanted to ask you even more, and I just couldn't get to it all. Um, and um, and um, Roy says thanks as well. 
Michael says thanks. Of course, Michael's always thankful. Tim says thanks. Bella says thanks. Everybody says thanks. And Roy.